Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that focuses on musicians, authors, and interesting people. We like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. So sit back, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. On the podcast this time, a novelist, a songwriter, a playwright, a screenwriter, a pancake enthusiast, and he and his dog are public intellectuals living in a barn between a bear's lair and a moonshiner's camp. With me is the man, the myth, the legend, Tedder Bastard. How you doing, brother? Pretty good. Well, despite everything. Well, despite everything. All right, we'll have to delve into that a little bit later here. Uh, I love the way he's being described as a fine line between sexiness and absurdity. He's determined to find it. What's your thoughts on that statement? Uh, that was a good day. That was my very first uh, book, uh, a book, a short story collection. Uh-huh. And a guy in Pittsburgh wrote what, Norman something. He he wrote that. And I'm like, damn, that's <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm between sexiness and absurdity. Absolutely. I was going to say, how did you get the moniker Tender Bastard? Uh, when that first book of short stories came out, um, a good friend just wrote nothing in the subject line, and he just said, you tender bastard, two words. And I just, those words just came into me in that <laughs> moment. And uh, I've been tender bastard ever since. I was a little skeptical before, uh, early, but... Now I'm yeah. tender bastard all the way. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you're catching the video, you can see it on his shirt. He's tender bastard. Absolutely. What about your creative beginnings? When did you fall in love with music and why? I started as a, a little kid listening to the radio in the kitchen. Um, I was just fascinated with, not even fascinated, I just liked songs. You know, hear him as a little kid. Um, and I always thought that Everybody was just making up a song on the spot. Mm -hmm. And that's what they like. They just all started playing and it just all came together. But I think that uh, in my parents' house in the basement, and they never said, they never mentioned it, but they had a whole big bookshelf and they had a, they had a, a turntable and records and they never said, Oh, go downstairs and read books. And no one mentioned, it. I don't think anyone else in the house used it but the first three things i heard on my own by putting it by putting a, a record on the turntable was harry belafonte mm -hmm. liberace mm -hmm. and the barber of seville oh wow and that was in italian i didn't know what it was but it was just so intense when they when they sang and, and i didn't hear those three things on the radio i might have seen liberace on, on TV, yeah, exactly, yeah. But Harry Belafonte, I didn't know what I didn't know it was Calypso. It was something that I hadn't heard that I liked. There you go. And, and I think those are the first things. And I just always listened to the radio uh, when the Beatles came out, Beatles Mania, mm -hmm. and when Paul died, I was taking notes and everything. Just, just all the songs, The Temptations, Gladys Knight and the Pips, it, just everybody. Absolutely. I just was listening. To the radio and then i started playing i started writing poetry uh in my teens and then it'd be then i met a kid in from school who was a year younger than me and i go over and i go after we went out in the back porch on this hillside smoked a joint um i go well i'm writing a lyric i'm writing this poetry and he goes oh really i play the acoustic guitar, the electric guitar, the bass guitar, the steel guitar, and the trombone. And then he proceeded to show me that he could play all those <laughs> instruments. And I was like, damn, I better learn to play an instrument so I can start writing songs. I think I started when I was 17, mm -hmm. 18. Then I added the harmonica. And I've since taught myself the fundamentals well enough to write songs. Right. Uh, the piano, mandolin, ukulele penny whistle and those have all been in the second half of my life mm -hmm. so and i'm looking forward to maybe getting uh, i've been trying to get a dulcimer a little lap dulcimer a lute and i've taught myself all those things i became a short story a songwriter when i was like 18 and i didn't really do anything else started writing short stories when i was maybe 40 mm -hmm. and since then i added on screenplays stage plays and musicals. I've actually had a musical um, produced, and I had a stage play written in Key West that was based on true events 
uh, produced in New York City. Wow! So that was. Huh. Tell you what, we're going to we're going to delve into we're going to delve into that in a little bit. But I want to play some music right now. Uh, let's showcase a song. Since it's baseball season, let's talk about your song, Baseball. What's the backstory on baseball? I had a, a nine-year journalism career tucked into all my mu- music years. And I covered, I don't know if I wrote three stories, um, on the Trinidad Triggers down in southern Colorado. Uh-huh. They are a... I think it's called the Pecos. Like the, it's the lowest league, but it's professional ball. Mm-hmm. There's triple A, double A, A, and then the big house, like Major League Baseball. Right. Yeah. And the Trinidad Triggers, you play sixty games in sixty days, like through middle of June to the middle of August. You get paid fifty dollars a week, <laughs> and you and you live with a host family. Host families, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. it's they scout that. They scout that league, and they're mostly looking for pitchers and home run hitters. And in one game that I was covering, in the seventh inning, they announced that this one pitcher, who I'd met a couple days earlier, big, tall kid. Mm-hmm. He was tall. I was in Walmart, and he was taller than, like, Rose. Yeah, all the shelves, yeah. He was dressed as a baseball player, even with his cleats on. And I'm going, like, this must be a hell, even though it's not Halloween. I, so I started talking to him, and he said, oh, I played for the Trinidad Triggers. My pitches are a little bit faster than everyone else because I'm taller. So I had that little bit extra downhill because the mound is raised. Yeah. And in the seventh inning, they announced that Nick was going, I think, to the Philadelphia Phillies from the bottom to a professional Baseball. His baseball dream came true, and then another kid during that time, um, home run, big, heavy hitter, uh-huh. he got picked up too in the same game. Awesome. So their baseball dreams came true, and you can only go back to that league until you're 26, right, and they're yeah. like, "Baseball's not for you anymore." Um, but that inspired me to write that song, and it's, you know, James Taylor has. Angels of Fenway, a baseball song. Right, yes, yes. In this instance, I'm not saying I write better than James Taylor, but in this instance, I did write a better baseball song. All right, let's hear it right now. I've got I've got my hot dogs, I got my ice cold beer. Let's bring on some baseball. Here's Tender Bastard from on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Here's baseball. At the dawn of man, someone hurled a rock. Somebody else cracked it out of the park. They said we better give this thing a name, and that's how. They invented the baseball game. We got the boys of summer trying to get to first base. Second, third, and home's just a distant place. At night when they sleep, they dream about it all. Making the play, getting the tag, knocking it over the wall like waving a flag. That's baseball. Well, the batter gets the first, rounds the plate, headed to second, the ball flies straight. Over their heads, the runner turns for third, gets waved home, and slides head first. Yeah, the boys of summer, you can see it in each eye. The dust gets churned when they let their bats fly. Grinding the bases and bringing their all. Every inning of every game, one day in the Hall of Fame. For playing baseball. Yeah, the world's beat up, black and blue. Future's uncertain, and it's getting worse too. But the bats get swung, and the bases run. And for a couple of hours, we're all having fun. Well, the score's tied up, man, it's down to the wire. Been in extra innings for over an hour. Bases are loaded, the count's three and two. Here comes a pitch, and the crowd goes, ooh, for the ball. Boys of summer trying to get first base. Second, third, and home's just a distant place. At night when they sleep, they 
daydream about it all. Making the play, getting the tag, knocking it over the wall like waving a flag. That's baseball. Yeah, the boys, the summer and the sweet season air. Man, if you got tickets, I will meet you there. Anytime they're playing baseball. Yeah, it's a great day for baseball. Sunny blue skies. Here's the pitch. It's going, it's going, it's gone. It's baseball. Yeah, baseball. Baseball. A salute to baseball right there. Tender Bastard is my guest today on the Someone You Should Know podcast. We'll have more great news from him in just a couple of minutes. But before we continue, I want to say thanks so much for tuning into the podcast. You can check us out on the World Wide Web at someoneyoushouldknowpodcast.com. If you go there, you're going to see our archive of more than 190 episodes and a whole lot more. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we invite you to leave us a review. That really helps us out big time. According to Buzzsprout, the service that shares us to all the streaming platforms, so very blessed to be heard in over 2,300 cities in 90 countries around Around the world, we want to salute a couple of those: Metairie, Louisiana; Plattsburgh, New York; Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada; and Helsinki, Finland. Thanks for tuning in to the Someone You Should Know podcast, or wherever quality streaming audio is available. Thanks for tuning in. We're speaking with Tender Bastard, and let's talk about your books. Now, you cover the gamut of a dog's memoir to a uh, hundred humorous examinations of humanity. What would you like uh, listeners, or let's say readers, to get from your book? Reading is fun yeah. and you, you learn things. And I, I just, I, everything that I've done, like novels, I started writing this story and it was originally supposed to be um, my first novel. I called it monkey business originally. Uh-huh. And I found out that, that that'll get buried by many, but the black eyed peas have a CD called monkey business. And, and um, so I changed it to two chimps and a chump and nothing else <laughs> comes up except <laughs> I love that too. I I love that story. And I just started writing this story. I don't know how long it's going to be. And I'm, and I'm typing away and it's supposed to be, I I guess monkey business. I mean, um, teacher is my post apocalyptic post nine 11 Mm -hmm. uh, novel. It was supposed to be about a, a, a first responder, who gets buried at the bottom of one of the towers and he lives and he figures it all out. And at the end, the FBI and the CIA and in the, in the sky, they're chasing, he's on a skidoo and they're chasing around Manhattan Island. But somehow that turned into um, a doctor in um, a made up nation of Victriola in the East, in Eastern Europe. Cause I, I'd lived in Poland and I just said it, there and he becomes he's the president's physician the president the president gets hit by a bus uh which you find out later was on purpose and uh he becomes it's always supposed to be the vice president vice president starbuck figures out that i'm going to be president and then as as president whalebone is laying there he goes atlas atlas emerald is the doctor he goes i name you the next president Starbuck goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, hey, what's the name of that book? So we, what's the name of that book? Yeah. That is two chimps and a chump. That's two on chimps the and a chump. God, that is so good. That is really good. As a matter of fact, where can we find that book at? Is it, is it available online? Well, tender. The easiest way to find it around the world is tenderbastard.com. Okay. Just like that. Tenderbastard.com. As a matter of fact, we're going to link to that to where people can go ahead and get your books, yeah. because that's that's all about. I mean, you've got a, a dog's memoir. You were talking, or before we started the show, you were talking. That was basically written about your dog, your your first dog, your last dog that you had. She inspired me. I started writing it in my voice, and it just wasn't as funny. Mm-hmm. And it was when I changed it to her voice, the novel just took off. Like yeah, like so. most writing should. You, you should just you should just be writing as fa- like Stephen King says it. You should just be writing fast. You're trying to keep up with the story. All right, very good. These are all available at uh, at tenderbastard.com. We'll have a link in the show notes for everyone to get those because I love reading and I know so many of my listeners do too. And also your book Poof. What's what's Poof about? There you Poof go. Poof is a novel that I, I figured out that over the last 
20. I, I usually write a novel lately every four years. And then the things in between screenplays, songs, all that stuff, performing. Um, and I wanted a new novel. And I had pieces of things, but I, I asked the universe mm-hmm. for an idea. And that is from Pablo Coelho's book, The Alchemist, where if you ask the universe for help and you're doing good work, it will assist you. And I was performing at uh, Hot Springs of all places, and the idea started to come to me. And I was in the, they put me in the dormitory, and this one girl, I'm telling the story, and there's a big picture window, and she looks out to the end, down to the end of the property, and there are windmills. And she goes, and she like sigh, and then she goes, and she looks at me like sigh, and she goes, there's a portal down there. And I'm like, damn, that's going in the novel. <laughs> so it's like a cosmic portal to, pa- to pass through. Um, and I started writing it without the title, but I had enough confidence that the title's going to come along when it does. And then I wrote the word poof, and I went, there's there the it title. Is. Yep. <laughs> there it is. And it's really my love letter to Boulder, Colorado. I've nice. been in and out of Boulder for years, and it's got a cosmic feel. It's got the flat iron mountains that stand up, which are the most eastern point of all of the Rockies from Canada to Mexico. So when people come to town and go, look, what's interesting to do in Boulder? I go, well, you can climb a 14er, one of the 52 mountains. They're all the tallest mountain, Rocky mountains are in Colorado. Yep. And I tell them you can climb a 14er. They go, I don't want to climb one. I go, okay, I told you, you can only do it in Colorado. And I said, well, you can also just drive up to the flat irons and stand at that point. It's a real vortex energy to it. I feel that about Boulder, that, that there's because of the mountains, and it's always been a hippie, dippy, skippy town. Not so much anymore, but it, it gained popularity in 67 when methamphetamine was introduced to the hippie culture mm-hmm. in the Haight Asbury in San Francisco. And I guess somebody didn't like them. They just said, I'm going home to Boulder, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And then I think I think that's what happened. more and more people started. Yeah, Boulder so. Boulder's a college town. Hey, let's get back to some music here. Song time again. Let's showcase See You Tonight. What's the story on See You Tonight? Oh, that's a recent song. Since George's death, she not only sent Mickey to me, but she sent me. I, I'm just writing. I was at my brother's house maybe a month ago. And mm-hmm. I usually go there and stay when I'm coming through. And we were partying a little bit. And all of a sudden, I just... Where do songs come from? Where did anything creative come from? I'm not sure, but I just started. I think the line came, it's been a hard night. It's been a hard day. It's been a minute by minute with me in it, play by play. And I'm like, God, man, that's pretty good. So when I went to bed, I, I, I always have a little, where to put it? A little um, recorder next to me I, I, I figure I, be, better than papers a little recorder i just because just get things done you don't have to write anything down right when i go to sleep when i walk around to get any idea and i had like 25 lines and i was like i mean i got a whole song when i wake up in the morning i'm just gonna put this together so in the morning i really had like a third of a song but it encouraged me to finish it and it's got an r&b feel to it even though when i pitch it the one sentence is see you tonight is a love ballad suitable to several genres. Because okay. I could see R&B, I could see even hip hop, whatever people want to do with it. Um, and, and it's a really great song to sing. It's got a line that goes, I was so beat up and torn. You, know, you can really do a lot with the words. So I'm thankful that I'm the most creative that I've ever been, probably. All right. So anyone listening out there who is contemplating some decent music, some fabulous music to add to your collection, here is C Tonight from Tender Bastard right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast. It's been a hard night. It's been a hard day. It's been a minute by minute with me in it play by play. But you know that I love you and you know that it's true. There is nothing in this worn out world I would not do To make you happy Treat you right From the dawning hour of morning Through the darkest hour of night And what it comes down to is this 
My one thing is your kiss I was so beat up and torn Such a sorry soul Running like a chicken Out of control But now we've got this solid thing And the joy that it can bring I'm looking forward to the sweetest delight When I see you tonight Well, I've never said this to anybody But I'm saying it now to you I'm hoping we can stay together forever And make all our dreams come true We've gotten through the darkest times and we're standing in the light this is so easy when it's right it's right our lips touch and I shoot to the stars get a good view of this love that is ours we deserve each other All that we've been through On our own to come together And be slow dancing with you You can read about the great romances And what they had to do Cupid's made a payment on a book that's overdue You don't have to worry How it's gonna be Take that stack of chips that you've been saving And bet them all on me set the best intentions and I've kept them in sight you'll be pleased what I'm intending when I see you tonight it feels so good to feel so good in a million years I never thought I could be saying See you tonight. That's See You Tonight by Tender Bastard. Great music right there. Now, I mentioned in the open that he is a philosopher, songwriter, activist, author, playwright, screenwriter. Let's talk about your stage projects. Let's talk about your uh, your screenplays and such. My first stage play, and I actually wrote a trilogy in Key West where my dog Georgia and I spent two winters, six months and six months, about a year, about 10 years ago. And I'm in Key West and hanging out at the beach with the um, car campers, the people that are living in vans and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, then uh, I'm going by on the bike, George, who had biked from Maine to Key West. And he said he lost something like 80 pounds. Jeez. He, he's driving by and he goes, hey, some of us guys are getting a boat, which means they want to be homeless. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, come to our hobo camp and do a book reading. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting proposition. I'll put that on my resume. So I went, and this is again my first, this one I only had one book still, one book, one book published. And I went there and did a reading and everybody got really drunk on $10 gallon bottles of vodka and tequila from Albertsons. It's not great. I tasted it once. I'm like, I don't know. But uh, people were getting stoned and everyone had uh, food stamps and they had all sorts of chicken and steaks and things. And the biggest guy, Mike, and it's on the, um, it's on the little bay on, on Stock Island, which is the next island back up from 
Key West because they were running a lot of homeless people out of town. So these guys are camping in the mangrove mangroves with mangrove rats running around. So I had my dog Georgia on the leash, and there's a highway not too far from us. So I put Georgia on the leash just so that she wouldn't run into traffic. But they're the mangroves. And the and the and the ocean technically the bay where mm-hmm. a lot of boats are parked, um, and they're on the hook. They're just parked out in the water uh, at the boat landing, the Stock Island boat landing. And Mike, the big guy, gets in a fight with the little guy Ken, and Mike goes running down. It, it's slope still, and he catches George's leash on his ankle and george was in her little sleeping bag i got for her she was already going to sleep it's dark she's like i'm going to bed and so she pops out she's she comes out of the sleeping bag and she's being trying to backpedal she's being dragged down the she doesn't know what the hell's going on she's just being dragged down the beach and she looks at me like fix this and dive after Mike and I want to go low because I don't want to catch an elbow in the face, which is where a lot of people get hurt in fights. Mm-hmm. When people are fighting and someone comes to break it up and they boom. So I catch him around the waist and slide down so he'll fall and he does. He falls on Ken on all the bikes, but we're all in a pile and when everyone breaks up, I'm on my knees and I look up through the mangroves. The, the moon is on the water and it's a full moon and it came into me almost completely moon over mangroves yeah. and i was like but that you can see on that, that is on tender bastard too you can watch the entirety of it it's about 84 minutes wow i went to New york city to film it and at the beginning you'll see me with my ukulele singing the title song and georgia comes on stage with me so georgia was on stage awesome very good we're yeah. running a little low on time here, so let me go ahead and uh, let's hit your social media. What would be the best way for people to stitch? Obviously, your website. Where else can we yeah. find you? I don't do much social media. Anyway. I got off Facebook because Facebook is is Facebook, the place for people who have nothing to say to say what they have to say. <laughs> okay. Last track we're going to feature is called The Blues. What is the backstory on The Blues? That song came really fast. Uh, where was I performing? Somewhere... On the, on the planes and there's a guy that has a Taylor guitar. It's a really nice guitar and he plays really well. He only plays covers and he was playing, I think a John Mayer. So, okay. And I went up front and when he was done, I said, man, that song has inspired me to write a song. And I did. And it's, and it's just, it's just blues images. There was this kid named little Willie He was no good for anything, but he could play the country blues. And man, that kid could sing. He came down to the crossroads, intent to sell his soul, grabbed the devil by his spiny tail, and turned his music into gold. Row on, big mama. And that part just came out. That much of it. And that's how I knew I was in the song again. So it's it's a nice. I'm trying to get it to Ry Cooter, David Bromberg, Ket Moe, Taj Mahal. But people don't want to work with anyone they don't know. So it's well, maybe, sure. maybe now that you're here on this podcast in front of what twenty one hundred cities, twenty two hundred cities, maybe what? someone there is going to say, yeah. "Hey, you know something? Tender Bastards got some damn good music here." We're going to close. The, we're going to close the yeah. show with the blues. I want to thank you so much for being a, uh, my guest on the podcast, brother. Yeah. Tender Bastard in Spanish. <laughs> Sorry, Tierno Bastardo. That's I. <laughs> <laughs> God bless your brother. You take care, man. Yeah. There was this kid named Little Willie. He was no good for anything. But he could play the country blues. And man, that kid could sing. He came down to the crossroads. Intent to sell his soul. Caught the devil by his spiny tail. Turned his music into gold Roll on Big Mama Till the wheels roll off the track There's going to be a hell to pay Before a good time's coming back And you know as well as anybody Nobody gets to choose Who gets left in 
And who gets left out when somebody sings the blues? In a bouquet of roses in New York City, a fortune teller saw his face. Tearing up a hardwood floor and burning down a place. He stepped out into the drizzled air, disappeared into the night. Turned up in Mississippi, giving a blind man back his sight. Took the train to Louisiana, it was something that he had to do. He was bound by blood and honor to an infant born anew. He crept into his daughter's bedroom. As she slept, he watched her breathe Kissed her forehead gently Then he took his leave And like Brahms and Paganini He knew the day would come The devil would be standing beside him Demanding his soul in some his deathbed a kid came and leaned down close guitar in hand little Willie died at midnight then the whole thing started again roll on big daddy cut a brother some slack I got a skull that's crawled with alcohol and an arm that's jammed with smack That led me like a lover and a muse I don't think I can ever repay you For giving me the blues Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of someone you should know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you and so do I.